In this video, we will be discussing the restoration of this mid-1800s bass made by Schuster Brothers. The unique thing about this bass to start with is that it had a removable neck. Although a very different design than our flyaway bass, it still was interesting to have something specially from this early in the shop. Initially there was some question as to the need to remove the neck, but in the final analysis, the neck had to be removed in order to facilitate work being done on the inside of the instrument. With the neck removed, we could see the full top, and there was at least one area in the top which had a sink in it and uh, many cracks, both emanating from the neck block and the bottom of the base, and in some cases extending through the base bar area. The back was this exquisite piece of flamed maple. Though it did have some issues, it had separated at the middle seam and uh, needed to be rebraced and replaced some inappropriate cleats. This is a picture of the neck block. Very precisely made for the mid-1800s. The back of the scroll was carved in relief in a floral design. If your initials were Jerry Buffa, you'd fall in love with this bass very quickly. This bass features custom engraved nickel plated machine plates. This decorative applique was part of the original bass's design. There were holes in the ribs of the base, in this instance caused by something hitting that particular spot repeatedly until it poked its way through. Similar marks and cracks on the bottom rib. In this view you can see the sunken part of the top. It's the dark area toward the middle of the top that extends from the bottom. This gave the base its shop name of shark bite. More cracks in the ribs and as you see when we open up the base there was a lot of patchwork in the true sense of the word done to repair it. This is the middle seam in the back of the base where it needs to be re-glued. Also, many of the old cleats had to be removed. This is an area where wood needed to be replaced in order to make the top stable again. Looking at that area from another view. Here is a plethora of patches to kind of hold this wood together and make the top usable over a long period of time using very different techniques and materials including plywood. All of these cleats were removed and replaced with the correct material. These are some of the repairs on the rib of the base and here is the troubled back brace. It was done at different times and with different methods and construction materials. Here is the base bar being reworked. Then I'm removing the old brace of two different kinds of wood 
and replacing them with the proper materials. This is the new brace in the back. Then the proper cleats could be replaced. Here is the mid-1800s Schuster base after restoration work done by Lemur Music Luthier Shop. This was an extensive restoration project and it took the better part of a year. The fingerboard reworked, the bridge work is all lemur, including their ebony adjuster for the height of the bridge. These are cracks in the top that have been sealed and properly repaired. You see the very fine tailpiece that came with this base. On the back of the base we have re-glued seam, new brace, and proper cleats. Here are two of the shark bite areas that you can see. We're proud of the restoration of this bass. It has restored the instrument to its former glory, a bass worthy of any classical setting. <laughs>